Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to Influencers Radio. This is going to be a, uh, a a good one because I have a guest today that is actually one of the tops in her field. Uh, she was one of the pioneers uh, in social media marketing. You probably know her as one of the top direct marketers. Uh, she's been one of the top direct marketers over the last 20 years. Was twice named by Forbes as one of the top 50 social media power influencers. She's been instrumental in in launching brands that you know, like Crest White Strips, uh, the Kroger grocery store loyalty programs. But one of the things that she's done that really I feel makes her an influencer uh, to a, a great extent is the fact that she's taking this uh, this experience and her knowledge and her abilities to give back. You may have known, seen that she has raised over three billion, that's billion with the B dollars for disabled American veterans, five dollars at a time over the last 20 years. And I am, of course, talking about Lori Taylor. Lori, welcome to Influencers Radio. Thanks. I'm glad to be here, Jack. Excited today to have well, this conversation. Well, I'm excited too, because what I just said about you is not what we're going to be talking about, but I want to, people to understand that you are taking this, the, 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 the connections and the ability and the knowledge and the experience you have to once again, the same way that you did with, with, with helping out the American disabled veterans is you're taking this to something else that you have a deep, deep passion for. And that is changing or educating people about how they are feeding their dogs. And, you know, that may not sound, I, I want to make sure that we frame this the right way and put the, the, the importance around this. Um, people don't realize, and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to give people a, a very tough pill to swallow today because it's not something they want to hear. And it's not something that they're going to feel good about that, that they've been participating in. But the fact is they just didn't know it was, was happening, but people are feeding their dogs. The equivalent of this, if they fed themselves or their children, the, the worst of fast food diets every day, every meal, and then dealing with the consequences that, undoubtedly come from that type of lifestyle. I'm going to let you have it because that is just blows me away. What the, the information yeah, that you it, have. It's so interesting when I first started, you know, investigating this and then we talk about my why later, but you know, when my, as I told you, my own dog got sick and then I ended up losing them. You know, I, I really, I, I really got curious about dogs and cancer because it's just so obvious that my vet knew so little about it. And there were so, it's not like people where there's 55 different options or alternatives to get your dog, you know, to get better with dogs. It's kind of like, you know, put them down, cut their leg off and maybe do chemo that will extend their life for a few months, but that's about it. And, you know, dogs shut down pretty quickly from cancer. And what I didn't, and at the time, so I started researching that really at the time was to save my dog's life. So, you know, you're never more motivated to do something when, than when you're in the middle of it, you know, when you're actually happening to you. And, uh, and so that's when I started really doing my research to find out more about canine cancer and, and you know, got, became friends with some people at Morris Foundation, which is one of the top cancer research foundations for dogs, and, and just did a ton of research. And, and what I did, what I found out was it wasn't what I was looking for, you know, I, I, and, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say that now. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to feel at the end of this, this interview is, wow, I didn't know. And I feel bad and you feel guilty. But, but the good news is after today, you do know and you, you can before you, you, you're going to know. I didn't know. And, and I, and I lost my best friend. You know, I still tear up. Like, I, like I love that dog and people who are listening that love their dog that they will get what I'm saying. It's like, I felt like I let him down because the truth is, like, I, you know, and this, and this is a stat, this is crazy. The truth is, like, your dog is four times more likely than you are to die of breast cancer. I've told that to people that people didn't know it. I've never had anyone go, yeah, I know. No, no one's ever said to me, yeah, I know. 
They just look at me like, what? And I'm like, yeah, they're eight times more likely to die of colon cancer. And they're 35 times more likely to die of skin cancer than we are as humans. They have fur. <laughs> they're not smoking cigarettes. They're not in a candy bed. They're not drinking alcohol. They're not, the only thing that they're doing is eating what you put in their bowl. That's it. That's all they're doing. And I say, you know, your choice is their voice. Because they're not the ones begging for you to, to drive them to McDonald's or drive them to Taco Bell and make all the terrible choices that you and I make. Your dog is going to eat what you give him. It's great. You know, it's like you're his chef. You're his Bob Green, his Oprah chef. You're the person that can change your dog's life. And I tell people, you know, if your dog's overweight, you probably are too. Because you're not moving his body. You're not moving your body. You're not paying attention to his nutrition. You're probably not paying attention to your own nutrition. And, and, and that's okay. And so I tell you that your dog's dying five to seven years before he needs to. Simply because you're not feeding them, most people are not feeding. And I'm going to say everyone. I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying everyone out there is not feeding their dog correctly. I'm just saying that most people I've talked to don't even know how to read their dog's dog food label. Like, well, I think what, yeah, exactly what you're saying is, is, you know, I have a dog and, you know, I felt doubly, I, I always say, well, exponentially, you know, worse from the fact that, I know that if, if I'm eating bad things, it's because of, you know, willpower or I'm lazy or I'm <laughs> just, but the dog has, there's no willpower involved, you know, the, 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 and, and that's what made me just feel doubly as bad that this is all on me. Right. And I understand that I didn't realize it, but it's every bit of it. So, but in in my decisions and, you know, you think you're doing right. So um, I know that you're not uh, trying to make people feel bad or, or, you know, that, that they've been doing the wrong thing knowingly. I mean, I try to do the things that, you know, you see on the human interest stories on TV. Well, don't feed your dog this and make sure you don't do this. And I'm not going to give them table food as I think I'm doing the right thing. But what's worse is I'm doing all these things. And then I go and I put this complete it sounds you know from all the evidence that i've seen that, that, that you've come up with this this big big uh, bowl of carcinogenic garbage in in the bowl because yeah and, and and it's funny because i mean here's the thing dogs with manufacturers are trying to do better okay they are there's some that are trying to do better but at the end of the day it's just a process in order to save millions there's 72 million you know, dog owners out there in America alone, you know, uh, we have, you know, we only have a limited amount of supply food, you know, that, that we can, you know, feed ourselves or feed our kind of animals. Um, and so the, the manufacturers are kind of limited. They make this kibble that they have to re, you know, heat to such ridiculous amounts that of heat that there's no nutrients left. It's just like if you microwave the crap out of a vegetable, I mean, you might as well just eat chips because there's nothing left of that broccoli, you know, I mean, it's just, that's been proven. And it's, it's also the same with dog food. But here's the interesting thing is that people, you know, it's starting to be kind of the rage. Oh, gluten-free for humans, right? They're now gluten-free for dogs. It's like gluten-free, this is wheat-free, this is corn-free. You'll see on there, um, on the bags of dog food and stuff like that. And what I found interesting, interesting was, you know, they're doing that because it's important. It's important that your dog get more protein and less carbs. That's just a fact. A wolf in the, in the wild, you know, your dog, we're not that far different. Your dogs are not that far away from their, their uh, ancestors as a wolf. And what in, in, in the wild, what they ate was 56% protein and only about 14% carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates really came from the lining of the animals they killed. You know, you don't really, you know, it's, it's deer that get in your garden and eat your plants. The wolves sit in your yard waiting for the, you know, the coyotes wait for the deer to come to eat some deer, but they're not really fighting with them over a strawberry or over a flower or whatever. Because a wolf in, ran through a field and it was starving, it's looking for a mouse to eat. It's not looking for, you know, to chew on the grass. It's, it's like when, it's so when, it, when, it, when a pea accidentally falls in my stew or something like that. That's what they, they ate it by accident, I guess. <laughs> yeah, by, you know, by accident. It's really not something that, they, you know, obviously, and, and what's interesting about all of this is that everyone's talking about what they're taking out of the dog food, but no one's really talking about what they're putting in. So, so they're taking out all the crap that should have never been there in the first place. And kudos to them for finally, you know, doing the right thing by the dog, you know, by your dog, by your, your best friend, by the, you know, your family member, depending on how you look at your dog, you know, and if you're one of those people that's listening right now, you're like, you know, who gives a crap? It's just a dog. Well, then that's fine. I mean, you're, you're, that's okay. If you're okay with your dog dying five years before they should, you shouldn't waste your time listening to this radio interview at all. But if you're like me, you know, and you want to, your dog to live to be 20 years old, which I do, 25 if I could, 
You know, there's an Australian, in, in Wikipedia, I'll tell you that the oldest record of a dog living was 29 years old, and it was a dog in Australia. His name was Bluey. Then there was another dog that lived to be like 26 years, and he was out of the U.K. And what's interesting is that the, what they had in common was they both ate a holistic diet. They both ate correctly. They both ate the way that a dog's supposed to be fed, which is primarily giving it a high amount of protein. Um, you know, at, at appropriate amounts and at appropriate amounts at appropriate times and frequencies. And so, what I found interesting is that all these doctors are talking about what they're t- taking out of it, but are they putting more meat in? Are they talking about, oh, we're putting more meat in? No, they're telling you first ingredient is. First ingredient is doesn't really, I mean, it, it's basically saying of all of our ingredients in here, you know, we have the, the uh, we have the most amount is that our first ingredient is the, is the chicken. So people think, oh, well, that means on the bag when it says 70% chicken, that the bag has 70% chicken in it. <laughs> what that means is that of the chicken, 70% of it's actually chicken. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. They, 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 well, <laughs> that, you know, what, what's scary is, you know, the, the, and, and I, I, I want to make sure that, that we don't, you know, graze over this, is the fact that, you know, you talk about how they emphasize what they take out. But they're not really, you know, talking too much about what they put in. Now, as humans, we have the FDA that, that supposedly regulates, you know, to make sure that we have a certain standard. There's a benchmark met. But we know that even with that benchmark, there's some pretty disgusting and unhealthy things allowed into um, our, our commercial foods. What are the regulations and benchmarks that uh, people that manufacture dog food, are they held to the same type of benchmarks that, uh, that human food is? No, they're not. And it's a great question because I'm telling you, people don't know this. People just think someone somewhere is regulating this and making it okay, and it's really not being done well. And um, they have what's called the Devil AFCO, um, which is basically the board um, that regulates. It's the feed, American Feed Control, right? It's feed, not food control, feed control. It was established in like in the early 1900s um, for because all of a sudden we started mass producing, you know, cows and chickens and distributing them out and everything. And so they wanted to make sure they had some regulatory stuff around what the animals were eating. You know, and as we know, it wasn't until, I don't know, I'm sorry, 10 or 20 years ago that that even improved. Like now we have organic and things like that because, you know, they're, they're, there's terrible conditions, terrible conditions with the cows and chickens and, and, and all the, uh, you know, our food sources are being subjected to that's unnecessary. It's just unnecessary roughness in order to eat. You know, and that's a whole other interview. But, you know, but, but, but putting that aside, you know, what they've done is, is this is a feed control. And what their primary goal and their rules and regulations were designed around was what you fed a cow and a chicken to fatten it up before you slaughtered it. You know, the, 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 the regulations they had wasn't, wasn't for longevity of these animals. It was for how can you, in the most healthy way, fatten them up as fast as possible for, so we can slaughter them, right? And so that people weren't cheating and doing things that were awful to get the animals to get the meat on them that they needed and that they were actually doing it properly. Well, that's what the, the same standards go for your dog and your cat, you know, your dog and your cat. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's like, what? That's probably one of the reasons why so many dogs are overweight because that feed concept is what they're putting into your bag of dog food. And, 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 and that it's completely, completely, geared towards animals that don't eat meat. And that's why, here's the thing, I bet you don't know, that in order for someone to have a bag of dog food and have it say like, you know, Aunt Betsy's lamb stew, in order for them to make the claim of lamb on there, it only has to have 3% of the bag only has to have lamb in it, 3%. So basically the standard that your feed your dog by says, it's okay for your dog to only get 3% protein. That's what that's saying to me. That's what that's saying. The the board that's regulating how your dog lives and dies is saying, we're going to, you only have to have 3% to say that it's lamb, to give it a lamb formula, to give it a beef formula, to give it a chicken formula. And on top of that, what happens is when, when, when they actually slaughter the chickens, they take off the piece of the chickens and stuff that can go for human consumption and that gets sent one direction. And then all the rest of it, the beaks, the bones, all the stuff that humans can't eat, they send in other directions, and they send into what's known as renderers. That's what it's called, and they render this this into this um, into like this liquid because I mean you wouldn't want to know what it really looked like. So it's like they they render the liquid, and in that rendering process, they and, and actually this is the part. Now wait for it. This a AFCO, their regulations and the FDA supports it allows for there to be dead and deceased animals in the feed. 
feed, which is food for your dog. So your dog, this is actually even the, um, the, the head, I think it's a vet devil AFCO. It's kind of escaping me now, but I think that's what it was, was shown on camera. It's at the dog food advisor dot com. If you want to see a video on camera admitting that yes, there is rendered dogs and cats in your dog's food. So many dog foods have these rendered products that actually are taking dogs that have been put down, you know, put down and cats moved down and actually reusing it for dog food, which I just think is incredibly disgusting. And I don't believe anyone would really want to feed their dog another dead dog. Like, I don't believe people want to do that. And, but, and I just, my whole thing is like, I just want people to be educated. And what I, if I could do anything with this whole movement is like, I want, I want them to do better by our dogs. I want them to, to have to tell us what's really in the bag. Well, period. Go ahead. No, I, I, well, I'm saying, so here, we get to a, a a really important crossroads here, and then there's a lot of people that are thinking that they're making those decisions because they feel that you know, well, I'm paying a premium because I'm choosing the the dog food at the store that says healthy on it. I'm choosing the dog yeah. food that, that that says you know that. So they 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 think they're making the right choice. They think they're doing better. Um, That's what I thought. And that's, let me tell you, I don't mean to interrupt you because but this is completely what started the full journey for me. Was when I found out about this all about the dogs, I thought, you know, fair, fine. Then I'm just going to pay more. Like, I'm going to go out and find the best dog food I can. It's a premium gourmet, and I'm going to pay $20 more a bag, whatever, and I'm going to do that, you know, the big bag. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to think about it, right? Because my dog, I don't want to pay $4,000, you know, for surgeries at the end of his life to try and save his life when I don't have to. I want to keep him as healthy as possible. Here's the thing, and this is going to blow your mind. I, you, you really, I mean, and I, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only person that's like, mind is blown by all this, and that's okay too, but I don't think so. When, when I found out, I went and checked also in this whole, all the regulations as I started going through, I went to a lady's blog, and it's called The Truth About Pet Food, I, The Truth About Pet Food, and it's an amazing, I mean, this woman has really, I mean, she really helped educate me. Her name is Susan. And I went there and I, I started doing some research and it turns out that there, you don't have to be any different to be super gourmet or premium. There's no regulations. Like you can just be, like you can just have a crappy bag of dog food that was out, you know, I don't want to say a brand name, but just something that people recognize that there's a cheap, cheap dog food. And there's nothing preventing them from putting premium or gourmet on it. There are no standards for premium gourmet. So you would think, well, if it's premium gourmet, then it must at least have 10% protein. Or it must at least only have this. Or it must guarantee that it doesn't have that. No. It's not regulated whatsoever. There's none, no special considerations need to be made to put premium or gourmet on your back. As long as they know how to spell it. It's kind of like coffee, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and the same as so it's a better marketing, a sexier bag, maybe a celebrity endorsement, boom, charge a bunch of money, and now all those guys, and I'm not saying this about every premium brand, I'm not saying that, I'm just telling you that there's no guarantees. And then, you know, they also have, they do have some regulations where you cannot put, like, a grilled piece of, a picture of grilled steak or grilled chicken on the outside of your bag unless there's actually, you can't misrepresent what's actually in the bag, you, you can't really do that with visuals, and people do it all the time. Yeah. People do it all the time. They, it's all over, the, and, it, and and there's no one really enforcing it. Well, there's, yeah, the, 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 well, yeah, the, that's what that's what I, I you know people think that people just assume that well certainly there's someone in charge of the proceedings here that, that's looking out for um, our, our animals and and I think that's what should make people angry and probably will make people angry because people aren't choosing it's just like if you if you you know if your child if you chose them to feed them a, a Big Mac for dinner and a and a waffle taco for breakfast and you're you force feeding them then yeah shame on you. But the fact that you think you're making better choices based on, you know, right. this is is w- what I think is really going to make people angry because I know there's people listening to this right now who have really gone above and beyond. They've talked to, they've gone to special pet stores. They've talked to people that, that seem to be knowledgeable about this. They've made choices. They paid more money and yet their dog still is getting the cancer. Their dog is still getting sick. Their dog is still getting those same, you know, the, the diseases that you, that you're talking about. And at the end of the day, they're still spending upwards of thousands of dollars to try to prolong this dog's life when it could have been prevented. If they, if their, their 
what they thought were educated choices were were true choices. And that's why when I started True Dog, which is the name of my company, when I started, it's like I really wanted to really wanted to educate people because you know there are you have your vets out there, and there's some wonderful vets. I've really never met a vet I didn't love. I just think they always do the right thing. A lot of them, them do. They love animals. Not all of them love people, but they all seem to love animals. But they really would tell you that they, you know, they go to some sponsored classes by big name brands that they put on. But you know, honest, I mean, honestly, I'm not saying it's not good training. The three days of nutrition training to add, but I'd offer it's a bit biased. I mean, you know, I mean, as it would be, and I, you know, and, and so your vet really doesn't, if you think about what your vet talks to you about, they're not really talking about nutrition. They're talking to you about maybe health preventative things like, you know, taking your, your heartworm medicine, brushing your dog's teeth. And they talk about those things, but they don't really talk to you about the actual nutrition until your dog has some sort of bladder condition or a liver condition or something that happens. And, you know, if your dog's chewing on themselves and they're shedding a whole bunch and, and they go to the bathroom too much, I mean, I'm telling you, it's just like humans. Nine times out of ten, if you could just take a look at the source of what all their problems are, it's going to be what you're feeding them. Just like you and I. If someone's heavy, you know, if, you're, if you've gained 20, 30 pounds in the last year, I guarantee you two things have happened. You, you moved more and you put moved less and you put more food in your mouth. I mean, that's, or, or, or worse food in your mouth that, that your body simply can't process correctly. So, you know, you know we have a Though that's yeah, the, the, that's the thing. The, the, okay. with, with, oh, I'm sorry. With the choices that that that, that they they have, it, it really is. Um, you know, it comes down to, you know, dogs can't say I don't like the way that tastes. Right? It's not a matter of taste. You, they're going to eat what what um, what you give them. Right? And so with with I'm amazed at how many people pet owners and dog owners I know whose dogs are on medication it's almost like a the, you know the dog's prescriptions and 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 how much of that could be it sounds like quite a bit of that could be avoided by the the choices of foods you, the, the, that could eliminate Absolutely. That. and there are some real picky eaters out there there are some dogs that are super picky and what I found is the better food the better you know more meat you give them based food the better off that they you know the more that they'll eat I mean we've done some studies around it um, that have kind of proven this out you know it, internally as we were developing everything but what was super important to me was we, we did we developed a dog food that you know is a freeze-dried raw dog food it hasn't been cooked uh, we take the moisture out you know we freeze it then we take the moisture out and you, you just add a little bit of water to it it doesn't get mushy at all because there's no grains, there's no fillers, there's nothing in it that meat. Okay, it's a bio-organ mix. It's the, the lungs, the heart, the you know, the stomach. There's tripe. There's the lining. I mean, the lining of the stomach. There's just all really great stuff in the dog food. That that's it. It's just from the cow that was harvested. You know, Temple Graden um, actually did our, our harvest facility. She's a big animal activist, so that we weren't being harmful. You know, we were we were treating the animals for harvesting the best we could, and. But what was most important for me is that I knew in my heart as a big dog lover, like I love big dogs, uh, I have great games, obviously, um, that not everyone could afford to, to buy, to, to pay. It's not that my dog is expensive. It's that feeding your dog actual meat is expensive because you're used to feeding your dog grains because most dog food is water, moisture, and grains. And that's why if you go look at the back of your dog's food, it'll be 70, 80% moisture. That's why your dog's bag food is so heavy. Because it's got moisture in there, right? So the dog, so the food doesn't crumble. So my food's light. So it's like a bag of chips, you know, it ships easily. We did all that. But I really thought, it's like, you know, I don't want to just, so, you know, so I developed treats that I thought everyone could afford, right? It's still just meat. That's it. Um, and, and you could feed it. So if you're going to treat your dog, you should at least give them, like, you know, anyone can afford to buy a nice bag of treats and really feed your dog. I mean, that, that's easy. And then the other thing I wanted to do, um, was have joint supplements and have skin and coat supplements because the bottom line is this. Not everybody, uh, if you have a 25 pound dog and under, if you're not feeding them a raw dog, you know, some sort of real meat based food, whether it's mine or someone else's, um, that's, that's just ridiculous because you're paying maybe five, seven dollars, ten dollars a month for dog food. You can spend twenty. Honestly, it's ten more dollars. If you've got three Labradors or whatever, then, you know, I understand, you know, adding a, another hundred and fifty dollars to your bill might be, wow, you know, not able to do that. So that's why I was like, look, I just want to educate you. Buy the best dog food you can, whatever that is. Know what to look for in the bag by being able to read the label accurately. And then, 
if you if you know, I was like, well, you know, I, I need to do a little better by my dog, but I can't really afford X, Y, or Z, then just get a supplement. But it's even that much more important to have a joint supplement, to have a vitamin for your dog, to take care, you know, to do the right things by him that way so that you can take care of the parts of him that might be struggling to survive just from the, the, the bowl that you're giving them, you know? And, and that's what, what I really want to do is just be able to have a place where people could come, they could trust it, and they'd know that, hey, we're doing the best by your dog. And this is, a, you know, love your dog's life. That's our motto. It's like, love your dog's life. You know, they protect you. They love you. They, they would protect you with their life. So I think it's your job to, like, love that life and protect it. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm glad you brought up that, that this is, it does cost more to do the right thing. And and it's not that you, uh, that it's cost a, a premium. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. It's that you know the 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 garbage that's being sold to to us as dog food is complete. You know it, it, that's why it, it costs what it does. It's 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 cheap. So it's it's not that this is expensive. It's that the other stuff is 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 too cheap in, in my mind. But regardless of the cost, it, it has to be magnitudes uh, cheaper than what it cost in uh, medical bills down the line. You know, we, we always know it's, 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 it's obvious prevention is cheaper than cure, and a lot of people just neglect that or ignore that. But, you know, talk about the, that and, you know, the cost of, of doing the right thing now versus when you get into that desperation and panic when something actually does crop up. Well, you just have to look at how much your vet bills can be. I mean, you go talk to some people, go Google online. I mean, you know, your dog gets cancer, you're looking, and you try to save his life, you're looking at $3,000. I mean, it's just, it's just what it is. I mean, you're three to four to 5000 to depending on what's wrong with them. You know, I know a friend that had to, you know, my great dane uh, just two months ago, my, the, the one, not the one that died cancer, but the one I got after, you know, he, he figured out how to open the pantry with his nose and my son didn't lock the door and he got in there and not only did he eat the food, he ate the bag and it got stuck in his intestines and we had to you know, kind of open and that was, you know, for the same as life, that was $4,500. Now that can't be prevented. That's not my point. My point is, is those are how much dog surgeries cost. I mean, that, you know, to open your dog, put him under, to do any type of surgery. I mean, you're talking about three to $4,000 and most people don't have pet insurance. And, you know, it really adds up. And so, like I said, if, if your dog is 25 pounds and under and you're listening, you should just go get this done. Whether it's True Dog, I mean, I don't mind naming other people. Sell and Chewies is a great brand. I don't, I'm not afraid at all. Don't, don't buy True Dog. Don't buy dog, True Dog if you don't want to. If you think I'm hypey and promotional or whatever. But, but go buy my competitor's food then. But do something that's actually, I don't mind saying that. It's like, you know, go buy a dog food that actually has meat in the bag. Now, we're one of the only raw dog foods that only have meat in the bag. Most of the dog, other dog foods, they, what I call beets are the new meat. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they're, you know, and they're not, by the way, but that's what I say, are beets are these meat. Because people are even, you know, some premiums said when they're taking out the corn, you know, talking about what they're taking out of dog food, then they're, they're putting back in there is what I call the new kind of filler, which is a vegetable. And look, uh, if you have to pick between a vegetable and a grain for your dog, I'm going to tell you I go with vegetable, just like humans, right? Just the same for the same reasons. But at the end of the day, I mean, even if it's a 40 pound dog or under, I mean, you're talking about maybe paying 15 percent more for your dog's food every month and 20 percent max. And it's like that; it's worth it. I mean, to me. I mean, and the only reason I wasn't feeding my dog that way is I didn't know. I, so I think most people, it's like you know. It's one of the things that I love what you say is like you don't know what you don't know, right? And so it's like, but but to know and not do is the same as not knowing also, right? So I always tell people, look, I just want to give you the information. You can do with it whatever you want. But if we if we didn't have it before and now you're getting this awareness, I feel like my job is done. And that's why I did this because I am a good marketer and I am a good at branding. And I've done a lot of great things with, with my skills. But I wanted to do something that build my own brand. I wanted to put my heart and my soul into something that I thought would be fun. And I love, I have some great dog pages out there. I love my great day band. I love the people at my boxer page. I love the people at my poodle page. Like everyone loves their breed so much and their dog so much. I love people who rescue dogs. And I just think, gosh, we work so hard to, to get these dogs and love these dogs. And just to not know how to feed them, because people don't know. They just don't. They just go buy a good dog food. And most people try, you know, study it's a dog you don't know. So you spend the, buy the most expensive bag sometimes. And to find out that that most expensive bag 
is no better than maybe a cheaper bag. And at the end of the day, that what you should be feeding is not even on the shelf because a lot of the big retailers don't even carry it. You know, um, that, that's the part that's disheartening to me. And I, I just know, Jack, and if people knew that they about it, that, that they would think harder. I do. I really believe that. I believe most dog owners actually really want to do right by their dog. Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and that's what I, I. That's why I think that you're a true influencer in this because of you. Your mission is is to educate around those, and to me, true dog is you're not just educating, but you're providing a solution. Because the fact is, the solution isn't that easy to find. Even though that people know that there's the problem, uh, that it's, it's still. But how do I know what the solution is? You know, because nobody's telling the the complete truth. There's nobody regulating this. How do I know? And the fact that you're providing that solution also, I think, is is great. And I know with your passion behind this, the success that you've had in in moving forward with the other things that you've done with the American uh, Disabled Veterans and things, you're, you're going to uh, be incredibly successful with this. Now, what I like to find out is what influences the influencer. And I think this one is a, a little bit obvious, but, but, you know, what is it that influences you? What is this that has inspired you to do what you do and that finds its way back into the, uh, uh, what you're providing to all of these, these, uh, uh dog owners out there? You know, so it's funny. My, my, um, my adopted mom, I'm, I'm adopted. My adopted mom died of leukemia when I was 19. So I've always had a special, um, I've always wanted them to find a cure for cancer. I know, and like everyone does, but I really wanted that because I was so young when that happened and she was 15 when I got sick. And then my dog, my other dog that I had grown up, he died of old age. I had two dogs that died of old age. I never had a dog that got cancer until my dog TJ got cancer. I mean, until my dog Truman got cancer. And I mean, he was, I mean, he was only five years old. He should have lived to be, I mean, I know people have great days and everyone thinks they die at eight, but if you take care of them, they can live to be 12, 13 years old. They really can. I know a lot of people that have great days that live a long time. And I was devastated. I can't even tell you. I was getting ready to have my twins at the time. So I know it was in a real maternal place, but I was devastated by my dog getting sick. I, watching him be sick, watching him limp around. We removed his, the vet told me it hadn't spread to his body and that I had two choices. I could remove his leg only because he's a great day and it was his front leg. Great Danes are unique in that they put 80% of their weight because they're a big dog on their front leg. So he's like, if we remove his leg, I don't even know if he can walk. And so, you know, I did something crazy. Not my say. I was a talk to an animal communicator that we use for our horses. I, you know, I do show horses and stuff like that. I do jumping. And, and she talked to him, and, and he said he wanted to try as long as it wasn't too much pain. And so we did it. And that's just my belief. It works for me. And I sound kooky. I don't care. I'm just being honest because that's how I am. That's part of the name True Dog. It's about being true to yourself, being true to your dog, being true, you know, really knowing the facts and knowing what's the truth and what's not the truth. And so this is what I did. And my dog, and we removed his leg, and he said he thought he could do it, and he did. It was amazing. We called him Tripod, and he was just so, he's a big, great day, and he would just run across the yard. It was hysterical. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And then when he came running at you, he was, you know, let's just say the brakes didn't work as they used to, because he'd be like, oh, my God, you know, because he'd be running towards you, and you kind of knew he was going to really going to have to use you to stop. So, you know, but, you know, and then he died of a bone spur, because, it, because why? Because it was so much weight on his, you know, he died, he, we had to put him down because he was in so much pain, because I made that promise. That if he was ever in pain, I would I wouldn't prolong him for me. I would let him go. And when he when that happened, I upheld my end of the deal, and we let him go. And after that, my kids were devastated. It was a big hole in our family. And I thought, you know, and I started doing all the research. And there, there's Dr. Barbara Royal out there. There's all these vets out there talking about this. There's books out there on this. And I was like, people don't know it. It's not mainstream because no one has a mainstream marketing budget to tell everyone. And it's not going to benefit the other guys who are making kibble to let you know this because they can't actually produce it because of the process that they do, right? So who's going to get behind it? Who's going to let everyone know this? Who? So I thought, you know, I know how to do this. I mean, I, I, I know how to get a conversation started. I know how to use social media to get the word out to the people. And doesn't, it's free to do Facebook. I own my own agency. I just put my team on it. And I was like, I just want to get the word out there. That's it. And I can, I can do it. Because I have the skills to do it. I don't have to hire an agency to do it. I have an agency. I can use that agency to get the word out so people know, hey, feed your dog better, and they might never suffer what my dog did. And that's, I really, that's, that's the influence for me because, and, and on top of that, I'm working with the Morris Foundation to donate money to the foundation from sales and proceeds that we get at True Dog 
not to be cool, but because my biological mom got breast cancer. Now, she's a, she's a survivor because I finally found her, and seven years into it, she got breast cancer. And I thought, you know, I really want them to find a cure for cancer, but because of the FDA, and we all know, it's almost like we're never going to do it in our lifetime because there's so many regulations. It's so difficult to do clinical trials on humans, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? On dogs, their DNA is so similar to our DNA, which is why PETA and stuff exists because people like Procter & Gamble used to test on dogs, you know, for shampoos and things like that. They don't anymore, but they did. Why? Because dogs are so much like we are. Their, their DNA, everything's a lot like ours. So the point is, is that I feel like the cure, the dogs are the cure. I believe that in our, my lifetime, we could find a cure for cancer through dogs. I believe that through the Morris Foundation's efforts and, and things like that, that we could do that. And I feel like, you know, doing that for dogs would actually make us that much closer for humans. And we're just so integrated, you know, that we're so integrated together that, that that's what influences me. That's what drives me is the fact that I could get a million people talking about this, feeding their dog better, at least having the conversation. Even if you roll your eyes and say, you know what, I'm not going to pay that for dogs. My dog's fine. He eats his own poop. Well, he eats his own poop because he's hungry. And he's hungry because he's basically eating a Chinese meat. He's hungry like you are after eating a big fried rice. <laughs> you know, you're hungry 20 minutes later. But that's another conversation. But the point is, is like, you know, I get excited about the thought of this because I would love to be the person that started that conversation. That even if people couldn't do the right thing financially because they couldn't for whatever reason, I like knowing that now you know. And because you know, you're going to try a little bit harder. And because you tried a little bit harder for your dog, you might try a little bit harder for yourself. Because you're like, wow, nutrition is really important. Because I find a lot of people do better for their dogs than they do for themselves. And so, you know, I kind of started helping to start a movement called Keep Your Best Friend Fit, where, you know, you your dog is your hero. Your dog's the one that keeps you walking. Your dog, You know, you walk to keep your dog fit. And because your dog's walking with you, you become fit. You know, and, and there's a whole, you know, fun stuff around that. And that's a program we want to develop in the next year. And, and I think it'll be really fun for people. I think that right there is awesome. Take care of your best friend's best friend. Yeah, exactly. And when I tell people, keep your best friend fit, I'm not talking about you keeping your dog fit as much as I'm saying, get in a routine with your dog and do your things with your dog. And so pretty soon, if every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, you go walk your dog, guess what? This is what's so awesome about dogs. It doesn't take. It doesn't take 30 minutes for a 30 days for a dog to create a habit like it does us. Honestly, you walk your dog, try it this week, walk your dog at eight o'clock in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever time you can pick a time and keep it. And I promise you by the fifth or sixth day, your dog's going to be looking at you like, are we going? What's happening? Like when you get up off the couch, like, Oh, we must be going on our walk. Yeah. That's not something to develop a habit. And then all of a sudden you don't want to look at it and not walk him. Because you're like, okay, fine, dude, I'll take you on a walk. And, you know, so there's different, I mean, you know, different fun things that we can do to keep our bodies moving and keep their bodies moving. And well, that'll help keep them younger, too. Well, it is. And I, you know, I think that is really what, what makes you an influencer, you know, an a, a, a incredible influencer in the way that you take this and not just with the obvious solutions. But, you know, it's just you see this opportunity everywhere and you take the opportunity and a chance to be able to educate people around this. And I, and I think it's um, tremendous. So I know I know people want to know where they can find out more, how they can dig deeper into, uh, you know, what it is that they should be feeding and what it is they shouldn't be feeding their dogs and, you know, what the alternatives and the options are out there. How can they find that out? Um, they can go to our site, True Dog. It's T-R-U-D-O-G dot com. And there's some good information there that will help them out. There's also, a, I always tell people to go to the dog, the dog food advisor dot com. Um, that is a really good review site. They talk, we got a five-star review from them on our dog's food, and they talk about all this. He talks about the wolf. I mean, he doesn't care. He's an objective guy. He's saying, look, here's the best dry food. Here's the best wet food. Here's the best raw dog food. Here's the best freeze-dried raw dog food, which is what we have, freeze-dried raw dog food, which is a little more expensive than frozen raw dog food. And, you know, um, we also have on our website, check it out, which is, you know, five rock and raw recipes, because I always think, hey, I now I've told you, 
And you know what? Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't afford to have it done for you, right? But now that you know, why don't you go get my? It's a it's a free recipe book. You can get it, and you can make your own dog food if you want to. Just get it. All you need is a blender, and you got to follow the instructions. And you've got to. You can get two day old meat. You know stuff that you might not eat. You know that you that the grocery store. And every day you might spend five percent more than you're spending now on your dog food if you did it yourself. That's and a, that's awesome. That sounds like what my you wife know? feeds me. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we just, I just wanted a way for anyone to, you know, once I educated you, I didn't want to say, hey, my solution is the only solution because that's just not how I market. I like to let my product stand for itself. So I have a solution for you. There are other solutions out there. I like Progressive, you know, that insurance company. They don't just give you their quote. They give other people's quote and let you decide. Um, I'm cool with that. Like, uh, then I also wanted to give you a way to do it yourself because I think there's a lot of people out there that would do it themselves. And, um, you know, they just have to be careful how they handle the food and stuff like that because of it's being raw. And, you know, there's some uh, precautions you have to take um, handling raw meat, but it's no different than handling raw meat when you cook for yourself. You just have to be smart. That's all. So, fantastic. A different solution. TrueDog.com, T R U. D O G dot com. Lori Taylor, I want to thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing this, educating this. And actually, you know, you, you're forcing a lot of people to go and look at the back of their, their, their bags right now and see that what you're saying is right there in black and white and that uh, they need to make a decision. And, and so I appreciate you coming on and, and, and sharing that with us today. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. All right. Fantastic. Folks, there you have it. Check it out. True dog, T R U D O G dot com. Uh, if you have a dog, the, there's no reason for you not to investigate, uh, this further. So until next time on Influencers Radio, remember you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today. Or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.